In 16 years of teaching elementary school in Union, Maine, Charlene Dickens has learned that when it comes to dealing with kids, expect the unexpected. But on June 16, 1993, she found herself faced with a problem few teachers, if any before her, ever had to handle. Hi, guys. How you doing, Chris? Come on in, find a seat. We'll get ready to go back out for the field day. It was a real hot day. The kids were just coming in from recess and trying to cool off. Okay, come on in. Paul, one of my students, had a cantina had been given to him as a gift. He filled it up with water and went and sat down with his friends. Among the students in the second grade class was John Strout. They were all pretty thirsty. And first I took a drink and then Carlton took a drink and then Paul took a drink. And he was the one with bad luck. <laughs> What's wrong? At first, I couldn't understand what he was saying. The third time, I figured it out. Mrs. Dickens. Yeah, John. Paul's got his tongue stuck in the canteen. <laughs> what? <laughs> Paul, come here. Paul, let me see. Just relax. I looked in, and it seemed to be that the threads had a hold right on the tongue. His tongue stuck in the oh, Paul, how did this happen? Let me see if I can do anything. There was a real panicked look in his eye. Gosh, it's right on there, isn't it? I twisted it just a little bit because I didn't want to injure him, but suction held it right in place so that there wasn't any give to it at all. Hey, guys, relax. I realized that I needed somebody else with a little bit more expertise to help me out. That's it. Keep going around your waist. Keep trying. Keep trying. Gym teacher Joe Lufkin was supervising field day activities. Pretty good. One of the aides signaled to me across the gym. Okay, keep going. I'll be right back. He said that he had a little problem here with this student. Paul has his tongue stuck in the canteen. Mm. I noticed the kid was pretty concerned, so I realized it wasn't just a joke. He was getting a drink. Can you breathe okay? okay? The teachers send any injuries to me. Is that hurt? Okay. It's not that I know a whole lot, but I can do the routine things, and also, I have the ice. The only thing I could think of to do was put some ice in the water to cool the canteen down, which hopefully would cool his tongue down, and then perchance you could get it out. Okay. How's it going? The ice water didn't have much effect. Does that make it easier to pull on it? Can you pull on it now? I felt really helpless. Can you do it? And the only thing I was able to do was just keep him from getting real upset and making matters worse. Just try to relax, okay, I decided that this is going nowhere and this is out of my league, so I better call somebody. He has his tongue stuck in what? Okay. The Maine State Police Department was called in to help. Sonny, you're not going to believe this one. Attention all Union Ambulance personnel. We have a reported call at the elementary school for a nine-year-old boy with a canteen on his tongue. <laughs> they say canteen? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I've extricated people from a lot of things, but never a canteen. I said, we're going to have to figure this one out as we go along. Volunteer EMT Pat McAllister headed to the school. Your mouth nice and wide for me? I try to put my fingers in and physically back the tongue out, but it wasn't budging at all. They're pretty tight, isn't it, honey? Then there was concern, like, okay, this isn't going to work. Now what? Pat's husband, Mike, a volunteer ambulance driver and electrician, decided to go by the school to see if he could be of assistance. At home, it was kind of comical. But when you get there and you see how scared he is, so you just try to do everything you can to, to help him out. As additional rescue units continue to arrive, Paul's mother, Beth Benner, heard about the problem and rushed to the school. At first I thought, you know, he's got a canteen on his tongue. I'll get there and we'll get it off and it will be no big deal. When I saw him then, I knew that it's really, really stuck. Doesn't make any noise at all, okay? Let me hear it again. I just tried to explain to him that they was going to drill up through it to try to relieve the pressure. As close as you can to your mouth. We're going to help you hold the we'll hold canteen. Steady. He thought he was going to lose his tongue. Okay, you ready? You know, his eyes are bigger than buns. Get the drill hole here. Get the hole cut for you. Oh, easy. Okay. We'll drill a hole right in the front, okay? Everybody hang on. Okay. 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 Okay.
Okay, where are you? Okay? Okay. I want you to try to see if you can pull it off for me a little bit. When I went to okay. manipulate the tongue, it still didn't budge. There was no relief at all with that hole. Mike said, well, let me try blowing into okay. it and see if that will help. Okay, <sighs> As he blew, I tried to physically back the tongue out again, and still it just was not budging. Okay, let's stop. Okay, I'm getting blood on the side. I think we're doing more harm than good at this point. I was concerned, now knowing for sure that it was a swelling problem, that it might work into the base of his tongue and close up his airway. At that point, we made the decision to transport him to the hospital. Oh boy, Let you load it in, okay? You saw him going into the ambulance, and it still has the canteen on his tongue. Right onto it. I thought they might have to cut his tongue off to get the canteen off. Nine-year-old Paul Benner was taken to Benobscot Bay Medical Center, where emergency nurse Charlotte Fowley took over. Children, lots of times, stick things up their nose and in their ears, but this is a first. Okay. Well, can you open your mouth a little bit? Mm -hmm. a lubricant. So she around your tongue. We decided that we would try the lubricant, the KY jelly, to see if we could slide it off. Help her pull it a little bit. That just, that's just not working. We were not successful at that, so we knew that we had to attempt to cut it off. Hi, Paul. Surgeon Olaf Anderson was called in. Boy, that's a big can. You must have been real thirsty. The emergency room physician had said over the telephone, I suppose I can try and yank this thing off, but I know that the mother would faint. Can you take a real deep breath for me, Paul? So I think we need to try something more professional. Give me a little needle in your hand, okay? Obviously, we had to cut it off some way. And as soon as they'd started an intravenous line, and he seemed relaxed, uh, we went about our business. Now, I'm we had a wire cutter and a pair of scissors. We were able to make a hole in the can, but there were seams everywhere, and those were harder to traverse with those tools. We often have to improvise a little bit and look for different instruments, but it isn't often that we call in the engineering department. Within a matter of minutes, he was up with a fine selection of shears. We just picked the best ones and proceeded from there. All right, Paul. This is going to make it move a lot faster. Rob, do you want to come in here? Sure. Let's really hang on to this. Hold it nice and steady for me. At one point when the tin snips got really close to his eye, I said, just close your eyes, Paul. I said, just close your eyes. And Mom will watch for you. Okay. Almost over, Bob. Okay. Good. Okay. Wow. Good man. Then we saw the end of the tongue sticking out of the end of the cylinder like a drumstick. We could just get the wire cutter between the tongue and the cylinder. Almost there. And that is the last cut job. All right. Okay. And now we've just got to spring it open. Push this open. Here, it's coming. It's coming. Yeah. Wow. Now stick your tongue out. Just as soon as it came off, he was fine. I felt really relieved. I felt good. Paul was smiling. Everybody was smiling, you know. It was like, phew! After being given a quick checkup and a popsicle to ease the swelling, Paul was sent home. They promised me that they would get that canteen off, but I was afraid that I have to keep it on my tongue for the rest of my life. Okay, Paul, you fly by. That's all right. Paul is very set back, quiet. He's a good little boy. He's got a big heart. I think he learned not to stick his tongue in things. I don't believe anything like this will ever happen in his life again. I ain't gonna buy a canteen again because I might get my tongue stuck in it. There you go. <laughs> That's probably a chance of it. Do you need that drill over there? You sure? <laughs> we can get into that lobster. We can open that up and we can get all the meat out of the body with the drill. We were all real sure to focus on the positive and tell him how proud we were of him because we were. He really kept it together and was really calm and I thought handled it quite well.
That's the girl because it's soft. Mm. This is hard. That's hard. That's a boy. I think the lesson certainly is on teaching kids don't go sticking your tongues in places that aren't supposed to have a tongue in them. But that really was a happy ending. And I love happy endings. Tell him not to get his tongue stuck. How's that tongue doing in the lobster? Can I see it? Stick it way out. <laughs>